In this episode, we have a tsunami of storms developing, dumping very heavy rain, and severe flooding in places as the cold front will continue to drop south, bringing heat relief for some, but much cooler conditions, especially for the east. Plus, we'll take a look at some of the longer range data and kind of delve into what may be coming ahead. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back. This is Pal Ponder on Weather with another update. We're really going to expand the view this morning and really kind of hone in and tell you what's happening across the nation and the Caribbean. And we'll kind of look at the tropics as well. So let's take a look at the overall satellite picture this morning because it's just been a more or less a conveyor belt of moisture inundating right along this uh, cold front. And they're dumping some very heavy rain this morning into portions of Iowa, back into southern Wisconsin, especially getting into northern Illinois there. They had a ground stop at O'Hare Airport for a while. And so that that's uh, along that cold front we've been talking about, I'm really concerned about very severe flooding in those areas. Plus, we have Tropical Storm Howard out here into the open waters of the Pacific. And then we'll be looking at these tropical waves that are coming off the coast of Africa as well. So, but man, let's look at some of these uh, rainfall totals over the last, just say, 72 hours. And man, it's been pretty impressive storms up there in portions of Iowa, especially as in northern, northern Illinois. There, almost a foot of rain has dropped just in really the last two days. This is a three-day total, but we've seen sporadic storms. We've had this ridge of high pressure that's been just dominating much of the south and much of the central plains that's why kansas hasn't really seen much rainfall and it's been kind of just circling around this high pressure system we have the monsoonal flow that's going to continue to remain active and then you just have these conveyor belt of storms along this little cold front we've been talking about and it's been very slow moving but it's going to be on the move as we get deeper into the afternoon especially throughout the week but yeah, it's dumping some very heavy rain in its path. And some of this has caused some pretty significant flooding uh, up there. And they were getting rainfall rates at times up to three inches per hour in some of these overnight areas up towards uh, the Rockford area up there in Illinois. So definitely some a lot of heavy rain to contend with as along this cold front. And there is the cold front uh, as of this morning, about 11 o'clock. Uh, we had that flash flood warnings uh, in place and around towards the Chicago area that's going to continue to remain place for the next several hours along this band of just very heavy rain but there's also another band of very heavy rain that's setting up over portions of Maine just north of that boundary here but this cold front this is going to be drink dropping southward over time in the next couple of days bringing some heat relief <laughs> that a lot of you guys have seen some of the triple digits of late at least you'll be in the 90s uh, at least for a couple of days. So as we move forward, yeah, some of the heavier rains for today, there's going to be at that pocket just north of that boundary and the far extremes portions of, uh, you know, Vermont and New Hampshire getting up into, especially into Maine. There's also going to be another pocket of uh, more instability. This kind of aligns with daytime heating hours. So once that cold front drops into central and southern Illinois, that's when you'll start seeing some little bit heavier pockets of rain, but you can see it more or less it's been split. I mean, it's just split in the midsection of the country, at least for the heavier rain, the heaviest rains are going to be just to the right of that high pressure and to the left of the high pressure with that mon monsoonal flow. But as we get into your Tuesday time frame, there's the cold front. You can actually kind of see it being traversed across uh, Missouri and the portions of Kentucky again. Obviously, they don't need any more rain for them, uh, but they're going to be getting it. And some of that could be heavier at times. But there's also, unfortunately, it does bypass Kansas. Uh, you know, the, the, the ridge of high pressure has been pretty dominant, but we could start to see squeezing out some moisture, much needed moisture in Oklahoma, especially as it gets into the afternoon hours into portions of north texas and that'll be on uh, on tuesday but as you go into your tuesday afternoon or to say the heaviest pockets of rain will be it's basically to the left and the right of that high pressure so yeah so you're still going to get rain in portions of the midsection of the country but 
to the heaviest rain the heaviest most concerning rains as were the areas that just don't need the rainfall so again a lot of the lot, portions of kentucky west virginia into tennessee another slight risk for heavy rainfall so that is not good i mean these soils are extremely saturated we talked about 15 20 25 inches of rain just in the last 30 days so it's just been a relentless just a tsunami of storms just training over the same areas and uh, it continues with that cold front going to be on the move but as we get into wednesday it's going to be you know splitting splitting some of that rain showers uh at ahead of where areas that need the rain right so by the time we get into wednesday it's more or less going to be past oklahoma area but it'll be draping across more into texas east texas more or less uh, north texas and getting into portions of west texas where pretty much the entire state obviously needs desperately rainfall but right on again the same areas again where you're getting some of the flooding rains as of late will be getting more heavier rains and there's the bullseye again even on your wednesday time frame for again tennessee kentucky west virginia it, that'll sneak into portions of, of virginia as well but yeah that's the heaviest pockets of rain and of course you do have the monsoonal flow and we are getting some much needed rain in california into nevada so this is a good sign to see especially over the lake mead watershed out there uh, up into nevada it's seeing some of those heavier rain showers going to be impacting uh those areas but by the time we get into thursday and it continues to push further off into the south yeah it's gonna be losing its steam right i mean it's a cold front we're talking it's the middle you know beginning to middle of the august time frame now these cold fronts don't really travel that far south <laughs> that that fast so i mean you know it'll still ring out some rain showers but it won't be as heavier heaviest heavier rain a little bit lighter amounts as you get further off into central texas but along the coast here combined with the, the sea breeze You'll be looking at some heavier rains into Louisiana, into Mississippi, into Alabama, heading into Georgia. That, that'll be on the time on Thursday. But if you combine all that with the, along that cold front, yeah, for the most part, Nebraska, Kansas, and a good chunk of northern uh, Oklahoma misses out on this rain. But once we get portions of central and southern Oklahoma getting into north Texas, parts of central texas you could start you will see some beneficial rains over the next several days to come not not really heavier amounts but some isolated pockets could pick up one to two inches of rain but for the most part you're looking at maybe a quarter inch maybe a half inch of rain in these areas but that will hopefully put an end to the you know the rainless streak that, that north texas has been dealing with for the past 60 something days so but yeah, you can definitely see where all the heaviest rains will be in the portions of the Tennessee Valley, getting into Kentucky again, back into West Virginia, but also areas further to the north here where these, these boundaries are gonna be stalled in, into Jersey, into New York, along the coast here into portions of Rhode Island. These areas actually are under a drought right now. So if we zoom into some of these areas, yeah, some of these areas are actually in a severe drought. So it's a good sign that we're seeing Rhode Island pick up some much needed rain, Massachusetts, Connecticut, along along the Cape there. So this is a, definitely a good sign. Today we're picking up some good rains in say Maine area, but obviously much of Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, and points to the west are in a desperate drought right now. So all the rains are getting in California, and Nevada, and much of the desert pro, you know drought prone areas. Uh, bringing some at least at least some sort of relief for them so as we move forward let's just kind of expand the view to kind of give you an overall summary so we are going to have that little bit of a cold front but hey <laughs> a cold front really typically right now implies that it's going to bring the temperatures to say average <laughs> what you would typically see this time of year because we've been so far above average for this brutal summer and a good chunk of the central plains so even though we are gonna get a cold front, you'll be looking at mid to upper 90s, which is basically average for this time of year instead of triple digits and close to 102, 104 range. So, but we are gonna have a significant trough that's gonna be digging in. And for the most part, we're gonna be seeing a fairly healthy cool down for August standards and much more comfortable, much more seasonal weather happening for the Ohio Valley, a good chunk of the Southeast, 
and the Northeast as well. So all those heat advisories you're con contending with, we do have a significant cool down on the table that last more than a day or two is going to actually last for a good five to seven days for seeing some good comfortable weather conditions uh, for that area but you can definitely see on the precipitation anomalies where that ridge of high pressure is just almost a ring around it right you have the monsoonal flow and it's just you know you got a lot of sinking air under that ridge of high pressure so it's just very difficult to rain in that environment you do get some rain but for the most part it's below average which you would typically see this time of year for the next 10 days so really along the coast you're starting to hint at a little bit higher probabilities of heavier rainfall especially along the coast so eventually that we could see some of these one of these stalled fronts but going beyond that I do feel the ridge of high pressure will come back. So after, unfortunately, after the, you know, the little bit, little cool down that comes over the next couple of days, the ridge of high pressure comes back into this weekend and especially over this next week and just builds back again, which you've seen time and time again over the central plains, a lot more sinking air back on the table, a lot more, you know, drier conditions. So be welcome any rain that you get in these drought prone areas to uh, be happy that uh, because the taps do shut off again as we hit towards next you know this upcoming weekend going into next week and the, you'll have you know, those much cooler conditions hanging on for a good chunk uh, of the east but as we move forward and head towards the say the 18th to the 23rd time frame we're starting to get some sort of hints of above average precipitation trying to build up into the gulf of mexico typically this time of year, we do have the Manangeli Oscillation into phase two, heading into phase three. Those are pretty active phases on the tropical front. And this is hinting at some of these little fronts that come through that they could be stalled out in the Gulf of Mexico and try to develop some sort of low pressure center. So we are all, we're gonna be looking for maybe some in close development uh, as we get towards the third week of August here towards along the coast. So uh, so this is just something we're keeping an eye on right now going forward. But the mechanisms, the dynamics in the atmosphere do hint at some sort of, uh, you know, tropical type development, especially with that MJO developing into phase two and phase three, which is a very active phase. And this is typically where it highlights tropical storm development so moving out and taking a look at some of the big picture we do have that tropical storm howard on the table right now that's expected to be a hurricane and move out into the open waters now it's been very active in the pacific so but i do feel with the, the intensifying la nina of what's happening right now with the easterly burst out there in the central pacific i do feel after howard winds down things are going to be winding down for the Pacific and really start to ramp up heading into on the Atlantic side. So we're starting to get the beginning signs of it, but I really don't feel things get going until about another two more weeks on the Atlantic side. So if you zoom out here and uh, off the coast, we've got some pretty active waves that are coming off the coast of Africa right now. And this is a pretty healthy wave right now. The National Hurricane Center does have that 40% chance of developing. If we zoom in to that area, we've got some pretty healthy colder cloud tops associated with it. But this is the coast of Africa, guys. These are thousands of miles away from any landmass, especially for the United States. So typically, typically on an average tropical wave coming off the coast it would take in perfect conditions two weeks 14 days to even get close to the united states <laughs> so this is a long ways out i mean it, so it's typically what you would see this time of year to get to these little you know active waves coming off of africa and if you look at africa if you look at this zone yeah, we've got some pretty healthy, intense waves that are coming off, gonna be coming off the coast. So typically these you come off every two to three days, right? And a lot of them just kind of fizzle out, but some of them do try to hold together. And But again, it's got a lot of real estate, a lot of real estate before it hits any type of landmass and even reaches the Caribbean areas. A lot of times that takes 10 days in itself 
Uh, so, but I mean, if you take a look at the latest uh, GFS model course, this is only one model. <laughs> I wouldn't buy into this or anything like that because this, you know, Danielle is going to have a tough time, even if it does become a storm. But of course, the GFS has been the most bullish of all models, you know, so far, but it has very poor track record so far this year or so and I, I was just as i was recording this video this was the 6z run of course the new 12z run has nothing of the sort so don't buy into this or that i mean it's going to be very difficult for any storm to make it this far from africa through because we've got a lot of stable air mass up here into the open waters of the atlantic but this this wave does hint at it pulling for you know continue to move west and they did actually impact have an invest it is labeled invest 97 uh 97 right now but most of the guidance has it pulling north of the islands here so and as it does pull north most guidance does actually have it going out to sea and not even coming anywhere near land whatsoever that's even if it does develop and it's going to be having a tough time to do so but if it does it will become uh danielle but going forward looking at through the next 15 days you can see we got these active waves this is the latest eps guidance these active waves that come off the coast of africa and most if not all of these waves tend to pull these kind of out to sea and they come off you're going to have some active waves whether they get a name or not most of them have these pulling out to sea with these fronts coming in so and there's not much in the gulf of mexico and there's not much in the caribbean so it's still quiet for the next week or two but i think things are going to be ramping up you look at the gfs model of course it's a little bit more bullish it has a little bit more active waves it actually has it come in a little bit further south than what the european guidance has but again, most of them has it pulling out uh, to see. But again, I would look for in more enclosed type development over uh, the next two weeks with these little stalled frontal boundaries. So uh, where I'm kind of having my eyes on is right along this area from say Louisiana to the Florida Panhandle and also areas from the Carolinas up through say Jersey area of some some low pressure center trying to, to develop it and trying to have some sort of in close development so hey i appreciate you guys uh, watching do like this video definitely leave your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update why i protect you or in after the storm